Hi everyone, I'm Kieran and in today's episode we're taking three items and flipping them for resale in my booth. We've this cake tin for just two pounds and we're going to give it a completely new life to make it really profitable. I want to give this a coat of ferny paint in the colour Beach Buggy. Painting metal can be quite difficult to do, so I find that it's really best to work with a light, soft brush and to do multiple light passes. Just trying to get the best coverage you can, let it dry, come back, touch up the areas where you've missed and then just keep going until you have 100% coverage. This project took about three coats in total before I got the coverage I needed. I'm going to spray this with some spray sealer. It might seem fancy to have a sprayer just for sealer, but actually this sprayer cost me £20 and it means I can spray my project super quick and I just leave it hanging up in the garage. So it's just here on a hook in the garage and it's always ready to go. And the only thing I have to do is sometimes there's like a little varnish bugger on the front that's like... Um, solid it up so just pick that off and then you're ready to spray and then I don't normally just give it a quick test to make sure it's flowing nice. This paint sprayer has made such a massive difference to applying coats of sealer to my projects. Okay, so I have let that set and I think it looks much, much better now that it's been painted. I want to convert this into a clock. So I bought this clock mechanism on eBay for about three pounds, they used to be cheaper, so if you can thrift one, thrift one. Um, <laughs> the second hand's arrived completely bent. That's no good anymore. But we're going to drill a hole through, pop this on and mount it. And this is how it came out. Turning things into clocks is such a simple and easy way of being able to give new life to an old item. You can literally do this with anything that you can drill a hole through and pop a clock mechanism in the back. It definitely looks cool, I don't think it fits in with my antique engravings. I picked these up in a charity shop for just four pounds each, and I've got three of them. I'm really pleased with how this project came out. I think in my shop space, I'd be looking to sell it for around about 15 to 20 pounds, which is a great profit for not much effort. Next, we're gonna be upcycling this and giving it a fun carnival twist. I thrifted this filthy fish bowl for no more than 50p, and I wanted to give it new life. First things first, it needed a really good clean, so I took it with some oven cleaner, which is just a great degreaser to cut through all of that filthy grime, then set it to one side to dry. Anything circus themed or carnival themed sells really well for me. I remembered on Instagram somebody had found a load of old fish bowls that had been sign written to show that you could win a fish as a prize on one of the games. So I thought it'd be quite fun to recreate this. I printed it out on some plain paper and then put some double-sided sticky tape all on the back of the paper. I'll include a link to this graphic down in the description box if you want to recreate this project. I then used a craft knife to cut around the fish to effectively create a stencil that I could use to attach onto the glass and paint in. Don't worry about this being too perfect, I just went round and did my best to try and stay within the lines. Then you can pop out the black part and pop that to one side because we actually want the white part. Then I am going to do this the same with all of the letters and this really didn't take that long. And by the time that I had done this, the fishbowl was ready and dry. The weather is definitely changing, it's getting cold. I'd say if you've got a Cricut machine and you can do this, it's gonna be a lot easier and you're quite lucky. 
If you have got one, let me know what you think about it honestly down in the comments below because I have been thinking about getting one. Okay. This is a curved surface so it probably won't stick absolutely perfectly but you can just press it down as best as you can. Honestly these don't need to be perfect because they wouldn't have been originally. They would have just been something that someone with a bit of sign writing skill would have just popped together but I haven't got that skill so I need a template. And this is how it looks so far. Don't worry about it being too perfect. So for this project, I am using my Revell model paints. Um, these are enamel based, they are super durable and they are going to paint onto this glass really nicely. The only thing is these don't wash out of your brushes, so don't use your best brushes for this job. I use the enamel paint to paint in between the lines and to just fill in all of that space. Sometimes it can be better to dab it on a bit like a stencil. You can use this technique and these paints in lots of different ways to upcycle your thrifted finds. That's painted. There is some bleed through, I can already see that from the inside. But I can never remember whether you're supposed to take the masking tape off first or after it's dried. I'm going to go while it's still wet. I peeled off the paper as best as I could, trying not to disturb the paint too much. In some areas, the sticky tape left behind some of the residue and some of the tape. So I just let it completely dry, went back in and used a ball of the tape to remove the excess. Honestly, it's a good thing I wasn't going for perfection on this, but not to worry, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve to help fix it. The fish needed a little bit more detail, so I added a white eye, a little fin, and a mouth later on, and this is how it came out. I think this is a really fun project, and it's something that I think if I have another go at, I'll probably be able to do even better. But I'm really pleased with how this came out, and I think it could be a quirky, really fun vase. Don't worry, I will be putting on the label that this is not suitable for a real fish. I'm really pleased with how this project came out. I think it's a great bit of fun and whimsy. I think in my shop space, I'd be looking to sell this for around about 10 to 15 pounds. And even though it is quite unconventional, I bet you it will sell quickly. Just wanted to pop in and say, I hope you're enjoying this episode. And if you are, please don't forget to make sure you've hit that subscribe button. And if there's anyone else that you think might be interested in my content, please do feel free to share it with them because we're really trying to grow the channel and get to 4,000 subscribers. Now on to the next project. This oak card catalogue was actually going to be for my home, but I couldn't quite find the right place for it. So decided to give it a makeover to resell in my booth. First of all, I know I'm going to need to remove these handles. Surprisingly, the screws removed really easily from this piece. Normally, they're very difficult to remove. The heads of the screws were filled with gunk, so I had to clean them out first to be able to remove them. Now I need to keep these safe, because if I lose them, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. The box originally had a price tag of £49 on it, and I paid just 20 when I thrifted it. I knew the fronts were at least oak because I could see a little bit of it sticking out of the top left hand corner but I wasn't aware that the whole thing was oak so I was really excited when I stripped it back. I think it's probably best that I open these doors because I've just set off the fire alarm. It's a very windy day so hopefully that will stop the alarms going off again. So I wasn't really planning to strip the whole part, but it's coming off so quickly and so nicely that I think it's going to be worth it. But there is a lot of bits coming off, so I'm definitely going to need to get the hoover out. It probably took no more than about 30 minutes to remove all of this paint. It removed super easily. It's looking better. I didn't want to sand it, but I think I'm going to have to take it outside. I was really trying to avoid it because of how windy it is out there, but... I think I'm going to give it a quick blast with some 240 grit. 
Overall, I just wanted to even out some of the surface and just remove some of the paint flecks that were still left behind. So the sanding made all the difference. You can still see the paint. I wasn't going for a perfect restoration or anything on this. I just want to make it more desirable and saleable. And I think this definitely is. I like the way that the burn happened on uh, the wood. And there's a few areas where that's been. I have sanded it out um, on a few areas. But generally, I quite like it. So I'm going to give it a good wipe over with a damp cloth. And then it will be ready for finishing. As always, if you know me, this is just some glass cleaner on a cloth and I'm just going to remove that dust and it'll dry super quick. I really like using glass cleaner because it leaves a streak free, grease free surface ready for the next stage. To seal this piece up, I'm using satin ferny paint sealer. One coat will be plenty. Our ferny paint sealer is actually rated for use on floors, so one quick coat is going to be plenty for this home decor. I like to apply it with a slightly damp brush and it just glides on and I just brush out my brush strokes. It dries clear, it dries within about 10 minutes, something like that, but you should leave it 24 hours to fully cure. It will darken the wood just like any varnish normally does, um, but it normally lightens up a bit as well. But it's super heavy duty and hard wearing. In fact, that top is touch dry before I even got around to the back. Once you've finished, make sure you wash out your brush straight away because once this dries, it dries hard and it will be more difficult to wash out later. Do you know what? I even got all the screws to line up. All that's left to do is to add a little piece of white card into the card holders to finish them off. Without that, they don't look half as good. And this is how it came out. I'm really pleased with it and I think it looks far better than it originally did. I really like the oak colour and I like that it's got some signs of age and wear that makes it look really originally vintage. If this doesn't sell as it is, in a few weeks I will add some hairpin legs and sell it as a side table. I'm really pleased with how this came out. I think in my shop space I'd be looking to sell it for around about 45 to 50 pounds. It's not a huge markup on profit, but it didn't take that much time. I hope you like how these projects came out. I'm sure you'll agree there's something a bit different, but I bet you they all sell. They're going to return me a great lump of profit for not a lot of time or effort. Thanks so much for watching and in the meantime, I'll leave you with a playlist of some other videos while I get on with cleaning up my mess.